Good evening. Welcome to our Sunday night service. Let's begin by standing to our feet. Open our song books to page seven or look up on the screen for the words as we sing all four verses of I Gave My Life for Thee. All four verses. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be. For me, my father's house of life, my glory circle throne. I left for earthly night for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, as thou left a heart for me. I left, I left it all for thee, as thou left a heart for me. I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I've borne, I've borne it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me? I've borne, I've borne it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me? And I have bought to down from my home above, salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee, what hast thou brought to me? I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee, what hast thou brought to me? Amen. Turn on your songbooks to page 29 or look up on the screen as we sing At the Cross. Let's do all four verses. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I have done, he groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well might the sun in darkness hide, and shut his glories in. When Christ the mighty maker died, for man the creature's sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Let me hear you on that last verse. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away, tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, now I am happy all the day. Amen. Great singing. Amen. Brother Cribs, why don't you open us in a word of prayer, please? Amen. You may be seated. Um, one important prayer request, probably should have mentioned it even before our opening prayer, but uh, 
about 30 minutes ago, um, uh, Monica and uh, Holden, a uh, long-term member of our church, uh, passed away, went to heaven, and um, has uh, not been doing well for some time. We got a, a message uh, uh, this morning that uh, she had pneumonia, and uh, uh, and uh, they was going to put her in intensive care, and she chose not to go in intensive care, and um, uh, knew that she was not feeling well, but didn't realize just how serious it was, and, um, uh, and just about 30 minutes ago now, about 20 minutes till, um, uh, till 6, and uh, she slipped into heaven, and um, one of the uh, long-term members of our church, and, and um, one of the very first uh, 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 members that I met when I first came here in, in uh, 99, and uh, that summer, and, um, uh, and uh, you pray for uh, uh, Jen and uh, Debbie, and uh, they're still at the hospital there in Redlands. Uh, as soon as service is over, and um, I'm going to give them a call again, and, and we'll probably try to go make a visit and uh, tonight yet, and um, I'll try to get with the girls, and it's uh, going to be a difficult time for them. Don't have any details, of course, yet, and any type of service. I've talked to Brother Wilson, and I uh, just got off the phone with him just moments ago, before service started, and uh, he's given them a call, probably on the phone with them right now. So, uh, but pray for wisdom for him, and uh, as he and uh, tries to comfort them at long distance as well. And um, uh, just uh, uh, she struggled and uh, for uh, a number of months now, and and uh, but she's home with the Lord, and uh, and we're thankful for her testimony and love for the Lord. Going to be missed, and uh, Monica's uh, just a real part of our church, and. Uh, um, going to be missed by a lot of us, that, uh, and uh, is somebody special. So, do be praying for the family. Um, why don't you go ahead and come back and lead us another song, okay. Brother Joe? We'll Let's all stand. Open our song books to page four ten as we sing. Faith is a victory. Page four ten. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe and veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Let's take a minute, shake hands. back to our seats. Let's sing out on verse number two. Verse number two. Over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they like a whirlwind's breath swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Let's sing on the last verse, verse number four. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light our hearts will love a flame. Will vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Well, amen. And again, good to have each of you out tonight. Appreciate your faithfulness. Brother Bausch, why don't you ask God's blessings on the offering this evening? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house, Lord. We do ask that you uh, be with the 
some family, Lord, that you just uh, wrap your hands and your arms around them, Lord, and love on them dearly. Lord, we just ask that you take this uh, offering, multiply it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Stand up one last time and open our songbooks to page 401 as we sing Set My Soul Afire. Let's do all three verses. Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me. Let your voice be heard. soul of fire make my life a witness of thy saving power millions grope in darkness waiting for thy word set my soul of fire lord set my soul of fire set my soul of fire lord for the lost in sin Give to me a passion As I seek to win Help me not to falter Never let me fail Fill me with thy spirit Let thy will prevail Set my soul afire, Lord Set my soul afire, make my life a witness of thy saving power. that last verse. Set my soul afire, Lord, in my daily life. For too long I've wandered in this day of strife. Nothing else will matter but to live for Thee. I will be Your witness as You live in Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Monica and my wife Sandy went to high school together, so I am sure <laughs> they are enjoying it in heaven. Um, another name for heaven the Bible calls is Beulah Land, and uh, I'd like to sing this tonight. I'm kind of home, sick for a kind. 
country to where I've never been before. I know, I know sad goodbyes will there be spoken for time won't folks wanted to put me on mute and uh, well amen I think uh, can you hear me now and uh, first Timothy chapter 2 first Timothy chapter 2 I was anxious to get in the pulpit I and, uh, I've never said this in all the years of preached but uh, uh, appreciated uh, this morning tonight brother Joe one of the things that uh, little things that over the years that I do oftentimes and didn't do it every Sunday or every service but um, every now and then I I would take in a, and uh, I'd have a message messages that were um, that just really felt led of the Lord in particular messages and and um, and it was more for my sake just sort of something that for my own sake a lot of times and um, uh, 
I think we all need sometimes reassurance that you, that that you're that you're you're in the will of God. You're uh, you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, and and um, a lot of times I'd finish a message off, and uh, uh, a lot of times I'd, I'd think about a song, and uh, and I'd write at the bottom of my uh, of my outline, and this is something I, I've never told anybody, but um, every now and then I'd, I'd write a, a, a title of a song, and uh, at the bottom of, of the outline, some song that would sort of go with my message, and, um, and so I did that this morning. And uh, at the bottom of my outline, and I, I did that tonight. And Brother Joe, the last song, congregation song this morning, is the song I wrote at the bottom of my outline. And the last song tonight, Set My Soul Afire, is a song that I wrote at the bottom of my outline. And uh, did that both earlier in the week. And uh, kind of reinforcement that um, the Lord was in the song service, and, and apparently I got the right message. And... Uh, uh, or, or at least we had the right song service. I don't know. Maybe it's not the right message, but we got the right songs. And uh, I, I appreciate Brother Joe and the, uh, the time that he puts into the music here, don't you? And, uh, uh, yeah, and, and I know that he's prayed over that. And, and uh, over the years, I've just appreciated his diligence and, and the people that, 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 that choose the music carefully and uh, choose godly music and, and uh, uh, that music that, that speaks to hearts and and, uh, and I, I just, I don't know that I'd ever really taken time to just say how much over the years I've appreciated it. And how many times uh, you was right on. And uh, I won't mention the times that, if you missed it, it was my fault. And uh, <laughs> that, I, that, I, that, I, that I got the wrong song. I, and, uh, but uh, more times than not, we were, we were together. And uh, uh, or at least there was a song that was close. And, uh, and, I, and I appreciate it so much. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to read the first five verses, and if you have found your place, and uh, let's stand as we read from God's word tonight, and you follow along reading to yourself quietly as I read aloud, and, uh, and uh, the word of God says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made uh, for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty, and that this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. There's that phrase again. It's kind of interesting. Paul would use that, God, our Savior. We mentioned that this morning. It's, it's a, a unique phrase. It's not used often in the Scriptures. Verse 4, Who will have all men to be saved... And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray that you'll bless the preaching, the teaching of thy word tonight. I pray that you'll be glorified. We do pray for Monica's family and, and um, I pray that you'll take and comfort them tonight and and Lord, we pray for those that will minister to them this week. We pray for Brother Wilson. And Lord, I know how, how uh, helpless he must feel. I, I've, I've been there and, and, and know being away and, and uh, wanting to be here. And, and yet it needs to be away with his family. And, and Lord, uh, wanting to be in two places at the same time and how difficult that is. And, and Lord, I pray that, that, that you know the timing. You, you, you're... you're you're never taken by surprise with these things. And, and Lord, it's in your perfect timing and, and in your perfect will. And, Lord, we pray that um, you'll just take and, and, and be with both of them and, and through this and, and um, uh, help Brother Wilson learn what he needs to learn as a pastor uh, to, to let others sometimes minister and help and, and step in. And, and Lord, help uh, those that... that that are here to, to be the comfort and the, the aid that, that the Holden family needs now. We thank you again for Monica's testimony and, and, um, and Lord, what she's meant to us. She's family. She's not just a church member, but she's been family to us. And, and uh, we're going to miss her. And, and, but we thank you for her. And, and, um, and, and we, we remember the many, many, many good times that we've had together. And, and we'll give you the praise tonight as you bless this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach tonight um, 
a message, sort of a, a, a teaching message, uh, maybe more of a Wednesday night type message, but um, a message on how to pray for the lost, how to pray for the lost. Um, in the years of ministry, if, if there's anything that, that, that I've learned and I'm convinced of, and I, I don't know that I can give you a, a, a definitive uh, verse, line, and scripture that, 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 that definitively backs up what I'm going to tell you, but, I, but, I, but from experience and from, 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 from uh, external evidence and from, from my heart tonight, I, um, uh, I, I believe with all my heart that, that no one gets saved until somebody's prayed for them. I, my, my experience and, 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 and my, my belief in the scriptures, I, I, I've just come to believe very strongly that that, 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 that prayer is, is an avenue that's important and, um, uh, and, and in the, the, the salvation of souls, that, 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 that God uses prayer, and, um, and, and that prayer is, 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 is so very vital in, in seeing people saved. Uh, I've never known somebody to come to Christ, but what somebody hadn't prayed for their salvation before they got saved. Um, uh, it's, it's, and it's something that all of us can do. It's so vital. Um, uh, I look down through uh, church history and, and some of the great soul winners, and I, I, I see that the great soul winners were all people of prayer and people who were great passion and prayed for souls. John Knox and, uh, uh, was famous for, for praying, uh, uh, give me Scotland, Scotland or I die. Uh, George Whitfield. And I said, oh, Lord, uh, give me souls or take my soul. Um, uh, I'm going to, uh, the, the uh, 16th century English pur Puritan uh, Richard Baxter and uh, 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 wrote, and uh, a little bit lengthy here, but I'm just going to read it to you. It says, oh, it, and it's, it's written in 16th century English, so it's a little bit difficult to, to read and to listen to. You don't have to listen closely. But he wrote, oh, if you have the hearts of Christians or of men in you, uh, let them yearn toward the poor, ignorant, ungodly neighbors. Alas, there is but a step betwixt them and death and hell. Many hundred diseases are waiting, ready to seize upon them. If they die unregenerate, uh, they are lost forever. Have you hearts of rock that cannot pity men in such a case as this? If you believe not the word and the danger of sinners, why are you Christians yourselves? If you uh, do believe it, why do you not bestir yourself to the helping of others? Uh, Charles Spurgeon uh, wrote, If sinners will be damned, uh, at least let them leap over hell, over our bodies. Uh, if they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees, imploring them to stay. If hell must be filled, at least let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions. Let not one go there unwarned or unprayed for. Uh, the great soul winners of the past were those that, that understood the, the urgency of, 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 of praying and, and reaching out to, to, to the lost. As we read our text, uh, we're reminded of the Apostle Paul's burden for the lost. It was Paul who said that, that he was willing to, to, to change the place of his own countrymen uh, for their salvation and uh, uh, to go to hell himself if it, if, if it would make a difference uh, for their salvation. Here in verse number two, he starts, and, or verse number one of chapter two, he says, I exhort therefore that first of all, and uh, first of all, the priority of prayer. First of all, it's interesting that uh, uh, the Savior, our Savior only had uh, one prayer request during the ministry, he, and that prayer request was, pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest, that he'd send forth laborers into the fields, for the fields are white already unto harvest. Um, Probably one of the great burdens that uh, since uh, uh, I've stepped down as pastor and uh, has been the, the, the burden of, of, of realizing the, the, the need of, of, of training the next generation. And, and many of you know our, our, our involvement with West Coast Baptist College and, and the students and, and um, the frustration of, 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 of seeing the great need in our world today. There's never been a greater time to reach the world than today. Um, and yet we have fewer young people surrendering to the ministry than probably ever before. 
Um, may I say to you, I don't think that God's calling fewer young people to, to the ministry. I think there's just fewer surrendering to the ministry. Um, uh, the, the fields are, truly are ripened to harvest, uh, but the laborers are few. Uh, God's, God's asked us to pray for the, the, the Lord of Harvest, that he'd send forth laborers. Uh, today, there's, there's so much, uh, 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 so much uh, uh, in the world that appeals to young people today. Um, uh, listen, we, we, we need to pray that, that, that God will lay on the hearts of young people uh, the burden of the ministry. No greater life than a life of serving Christ. Uh, no greater life than, than giving your life to, to, to serve Christ, whether it is here in America or on a foreign field, um, uh, and, and, and praying for the lost. And uh, notice that, that the priority of prayer. And, uh, and uh, uh, first of all, Paul said to Timothy, and uh, I, I want you to, to, to pray. And uh, it begins with prayer. If we're going to reach this, our nation, if we're going to reach the world, it, it, it begins with prayer. Uh, we can't all go. But we can all pray. Uh, we can pray. Uh, notice it says and that, 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 that uh, first of all, that prayers and that, that supplications and prayers and intercession and, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Not only the priority of prayer, but the potpourri of prayer. Notice uh, that, that the, the types of praying that, that's involved here. It starts off with supplications. And literally, uh, uh, supplications is just simply asking and receiving. Uh, Dr. John R. Rice and uh, was one of my heroes when I was a young preacher and, and um, uh, had a little book and called Prayer, Asking and Receiving. And I, I, throughout my ministry, I would often uh, pull it off the shelf. And, and I suppose every three, four years, I would reread that book, Asking and Receiving, Prayer, Asking and Receiving. Simply just asking God and believing God and, and thanking God. And uh, listen, you have not because we ask not. Uh, I think that if there, if every failure in life is really a prayer failure. Uh, we have not because we ask not. Yeah. Learning just ask God and expecting God to do great things. Um, uh, uh, William Carey said, uh, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. Uh, we, we're raising a generation that doesn't know how to ask God for great things and expect great things from God. Uh, our, our, our children don't see our parents praying and, 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 and asking God for great things. They're not seeing our, our parents get great things from God. When was the last time your kids saw you pray for something and, and, and see a prayer answered? Uh, uh, supplications is simply asking God for something special. Uh, and, and nothing could be more special than asking God for a soul. Uh, and listen, uh, it's amazing when we begin to, 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 to zero in on, on somebody special. Every one of us ought to have a prayer list. And uh, I've never known somebody to be a great prayer warrior without a great prayer list. And uh, we ought to have a prayer list that, 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 that encompasses uh, uh, some, certain things every day. Uh, a prayer list that, 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 uh, that, that, that we pray for uh, every day. Some things we pray for every week. Some things we pray for every month. Uh, uh, there are certain things that I pray for on Mondays, certain things I pray for on Tuesdays, certain things I pray for on Wednesdays. Uh, and, and you ought to organize that, that prayer list. You ought to have a place that you pray uh, on a regular basis, a time that you pray on a regular basis. Uh, uh, but get that list. And, and on that list, there ought to be some people's names. There ought to be people's names that you're praying for that's lost. And uh, I, I remember when we began to pray for my dad. And, and uh, uh, I, I, boy, and, and, and there, there just for, for weeks and months and years, and, and that we prayed for him. And, I, and, and, and that was discouraging. We didn't think he'd ever make a decision. Uh, 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 it, was, it, was, it, it just took years and years of prayer. But, but God answers prayer. Uh, uh, I, I, I wish we had time tonight, and I could tell you some of the, the stories. I, I, re, I remember when we first moved to uh, a, a town in southern Illinois called Effingham, and, and uh, 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 there, was a, uh, there was a little fruit uh, uh, stand where they sold uh, vegetables and, and strawberries and, and different things, and, and this little corner market, and, and uh, 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 there was a... Uh, uh, the t really the town drunk, I guess you'd call him, and, and uh, sat out there. His wife sold the, the, the goods, and, and he drank the profits. And, and, uh, 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 and I got a burden for, for uh, 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 the, the old man and, and uh, began to pray for him. And, and, uh, and I'd go by and I'd visit him, and he'd, he'd run me off, and he'd say, I don't want to hear it, preacher. I don't want to talk to it. I, I don't want any of that religion and stuff. And I just kept going back, and I kept praying, and I kept praying. I got the church to pray. 
And, the, and I got, and I, I'd, I'd go to, to fellowship meetings with preachers, and I'd, I'd ask them to pray for, for him. And, and, uh, and we just kept praying, and we kept praying, and kept praying. And, and a year went by, and two years went by, and three years went by. And, uh, and I went by one, 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 one week, and, and uh, he was out there, and he, he was, uh, had, had a big old rod. And, and it, it, he sat on a, a piece of concrete in an old metal lawn chair, and, and he had this rod, and he was poking it down in the hole in the ground and that, that concrete. And I stopped, and I asked him, what are you doing? And he, it was a well, and it, it had cement top on it, and there was a well underneath it. And he said, uh, he said I, I dropped my beer bottles down in that well. And he said, I filled it up, and I was breaking the bottles so I could put more bottles down in it. And I said, you filled that, that well up with beer bottles? He said, yeah, I filled it up four times. And I've had to break them all up and filled it up four times. And, and, uh, and I've got to break them up so I can fill that well up again. And, and I, says, I, and, um, I said, Don't you, aren't you going to get tired of that? And uh, big, heavy set man. And, and, um, and I sat down there with him and, and, and got to talking to him. I says, I'm going to ask you one more time. And I said, uh, where are you going to spend eternity? And he says, you're going to get tired of asking me, aren't you? And I says, I'm never going to get tired of asking you. And I says, I'm praying for you. He says, you're, you're serious about this, aren't you? He said, well, he said, uh, we just will get this over with. He said, uh, go ahead and show me what you want to show me. And I opened up the Bible, and I began to show him the scriptures. And I don't know what happened, except God just answered prayer and God began to soften his heart. He got to lead him to the Lord. Amen. And uh, God transformed his life. He uh, built a little old shack there where that, that, that concrete well was at. And uh, it called it his prayer shack. And uh, he, uh, he'd go in that prayer shack and he'd, he'd sit there and He'd spend the day on his knees praying for me. And um, uh, I remember one Sunday, it, oftentimes he'd come to service and he'd get up in the middle of service and he'd, he'd, the Lord would speak to him. And he'd just come to the altar. And he'd, if he wanted to pray, he'd pray. He didn't wait for the invitation. He'd just come and pray. And one, one Sunday he'd come down the middle of the service and he'd just a weeping and a wailing and he'd just a bubbler and bubbling and just making all kinds of noise. And I couldn't preach because everybody's looking right figure out what's going on. And, uh, he, he, was, he was just, just a wailing. I mean, just, just uh, really upset. And, and I had to quit, and I got down and tried to figure out what's going on. And he said, Preacher, he says, I, I, just, I think I've lost my salvation. I said, no, you haven't lost your salvation. He said, I think maybe I have. And uh, he had uh, he'd gotten a little head cold. And he had, uh, before he got saved, he said, I used to, I used to make myself a hot toddy. I, I'd take some... drops and I'd, uh, I'd melt the cough drops and pour a little whiskey in a can and I'd melt it all together and, and I'd, I'd, I'd heat it up and I'd drink it. And he said, I, I, I got this chest cold. And he said, this week I, I, I made myself one of those hot toddies and I, I made myself some cough syrup and uh, he said, you think God's going to take my salvation away from thinking that? And I, he says, I, I, I don't think he's happy with me, but I don't think he took his salvation away from me. I said, well, preacher, I'm so sorry. I wanted to tell the church what he'd done wrong and, and uh, get right. And uh, the Lord finally took him home at 90, I think 96, 97 years old. He finally went home to be with the Lord. And uh, God answered prayer. Amen. And, uh, Amen. Uh, everybody in town would come by and say, what happened? What happened to him? And he'd, he'd tell them, God saved my soul. Amen. God changed my I could go on tonight and talk about how that things. Listen, that the prayer makes a difference, and prayer makes a difference. The supplications, the asking and receiving, and, 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 and supplications, asking, then prayers, prayer, and that, that went here. And when it says supplications, that's asking, and then prayers. This is this is this is a, a form of praise uh, of worshiping. Uh, Psalm 107 verse 8 says that all oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works for the children of men. Um, 
worshiping in the Bible. We don't have time to, to go into it in detail, but if you, you study really worshiping in the Bible, a lot of folks have misconceptions of real worship. Um, worship, uh, today we hear a lot about worship leaders and uh, 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 is another term for song leaders and so forth. Now, now I think singing can be a form of worship, but but the truth is that w- when you really study, almost every time you, you read about worship in the Bible, you'll also you, you'll you'll read about them falling on their face, or kneeling, or bowing. Um, people bow and they were praying. They were kneeling. They were bowing. They were falling on their face when they worshipped. It was a humbling experience. It was, a, it was, it was humbling. It was a, a surrendering time. It was a yielding time. Worshiping was, was, a, was a coming and, and, and so a total surrender to the Lord. Uh, probably the closest thing that we have today to, to real worship service is, is really the invitation time of our church service. Uh, when we get down to the close... And we give an invitation at the end of the service, and we give an opportunity for people to come and kneel at an altar and just, just pour their heart out. That, that's a real form of worship. We just, we just pour it out to the Lord. You know, the same thing as, you know, when the Bible talks about lifting up holy hands to the Lord, if you, if, 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 if you really study lifting up holy hands in the Old Testament, it, it wasn't this, it was this. It was, it was a surrendering. It was, I, I surrender. It was really, uh, get down, I'm, I won't get up. But, but it, was, it was falling down and it was, I, I, I yield to the Lord. I, Lord, I, I want to see these folks saved. And I, I'm yielding to do whatever I need to do. Um, use me. Lord, uh, if I, I want to be your mouthpiece. I want to be, there's something in my life that's hindering them from getting saved. There's something in my life that would, could be used to help bring them to you. There's something in my life that's standing between, if, if my, my life's not what it should be, if, if my attitude, if my, my spirit, if my, my lifestyle, if I need to change my actions, and my habits, that, that's what that's talking about. It's, I'm, I, I'm, it, it, it's, the, the prayers are, Lord, I'm worshiping you. Then, then so, so we begin with, 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 with the, the, the supplications. I'm asking, Lord, for the souls of men. I'm asking for, for people to be saved. I, I may be asking individually. I may be asking corporately. I may be asking for, for laborers for the harvest. I may be praying for a missionary. I may be praying for the pastor and his preaching on Sunday. I may be praying for a particular person. I may be praying... For my city, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm praying and asking God for souls and laborers. And, and then I'm, I'm surrendering in prayers and worshiping God and saying, God, here am I and whatever it is. And Lord, I, I, I know that you're able and I just want to give you the glory and you the praise. And, and Lord, I, I, want you, you to, to, to re- I want you to be glorified in this. And Lord, this isn't for... This isn't so that we can brag about our attendance, and this isn't so that. Yeah. I, 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 sometimes I, I've, I've known. Sometimes I hope this comes out right. I, I know sometimes that maybe a a wife will have a lost husband, and she'll want her husband saved. And she'll want her husband saved so that she has a better husband, not necessarily because her husband mm-hmm. needs to be saved. Just simply because she's tired of living with the old goat. Does that make sense? Now, I, I don't blame her for wanting, not wanting to live with the old goat any longer. I've known kids, teenagers. I, I was that way. I got saved. My parents were still. And there was times I just prayed. And I, God saved my parents. And it was, but I was praying that they'd get saved so it would be easier for me to live. Christian life, easier. Yeah, I could do things that I wanted to do because 
they'd be better parents for me. But the truth of the matter is, they just needed to, to know Christ. Amen. Amen. My motives were wrong. Am I, am I making any sense here? Yes. Amen. Yes. We need to pray for God's glory. That's that's prayer. Yes. So we we can spend a long time on these. I gotta move on, but we got we got supplication and prayers, and then, then we got intercessions. Now intercession is a this particular Greek word is only used twice in the New Testament. It, it's an interesting word. It, 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 its meaning has to do with drawing near or fellowshipping. It, it, it's, it's, it's a really an interesting word. It, it, in a secular way, it, it was, it's used of a child cuddling up to a parent. Um, a child snuggling up close to mom and dad and pleading with mom and dad for something. Romans 8.15 says, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That word Abba is, 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 would be comparable to what we would say today, Daddy or Papa. Um, it, it's an intimate uh, term for 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 the for for, for the father. Um, intercession has the idea of of continuing. Um, I remember when our kids were small, and uh, they'd want something. Uh, Brother Cal, what about eighty years ago when your kids were small? <laughs> Ninety years ago. I don't know. You know 20 years ago, <laughs> they'd, they'd come up and they'd grab your leg and say, Daddy, you know, can, can, can we go to the park? Can, can, come on, Daddy, please, can I have a pony? Can I have a pony? Please, please, can I have a pony? Can I, can I please, 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 I want a pony. Please, please, can I have a pony? I want a pony. Please, please, I, come on, I, I want a pony. I, I, Daddy, please, please. Can I have a, now it's Dorothy, you know, she, can I, can I have a pony? <laughs> she wants a pony. <laughs> Nibbles on your ear a little bit. And says, can I, please, please. <laughs> I want a pony ride. Can, can I, and she just keeps on the nibbling until, until you, you yield. You just, just, just keeps, keeps on, keep on. Like a little child, just that's intercession. If you want to see somebody saved, you just keep pleading. By the way, you keep pleading with God and you keep pleading with the individual. With both. Don't give up. You go with a broken heart. You'll never argue somebody into salvation. People don't get saved because you're smarter than they are. You know more than they are. You, you, your, your religion's better than their religion. People get saved because you, you're broken and you love them and they see how much you love them and you care. You, 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 just, you just never win them because we, Betty Jo and I, we started dating I asked her out, I guess, probably five, six times, and she turned me down every time. And uh, I knew I had to come up with a different plan. And uh, there was a young uh, fellow that was living in our house that went, I went to school with, and he lived out on the farm. And you know, during the wintertime, rather than coming into town, he, he stayed with us. And and uh, well, I talked him into inviting Betty Joe's best friend uh, out on a date. And uh, so he invited Betty Joe's best friend out for a date. And, and um, they ended up uh, worked out to end up double date. He said the only way she'd go out with my best friend was if Betty Joe would go out with me. And it worked out pretty good. And, uh, <laughs> the problem was Betty Joe's friend was uh, was a Mormon, and uh, her name was 
enduring and envisioning his mark. And uh, I was uh, Mark Lorraine's best man, and Betty Joel is Mark Lorraine's maid of honor, and Mark was my best man, and Lorraine was Betty Joel and uh, Betty Joel's maid of honor. We were in our weddings back and forth. We were inseparable. Last seven years of high school, and first year of college or so, and they became extremely uh, active in the Mormon Church, and, and of course I went into the ministry of the Baptist preacher. And we spent uh, forty-five, almost fifty years trying to reach each other. Mark got cancer a year ago. to really deteriorate. And, uh, last summer, made one last trip to Sterling, Colorado. I went into the room just a couple weeks before he passed away. And I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get him alone away from his wife. And I had prayed and prayed that I'd have the opportunity to get him alone. Knowing that she was the stronger of the two in Mormonism. And I just turned to Mark and I said, Mark, you know, I love you. You look like a brother to me. And I know that your time here on earth is not very much longer. But I want to see you in heaven. If not, the Mormon church is going to get you there. I was able to lead him to the Lord, not because I attacked Mormonism, of course. But I won him to the Lord because I never stopped loving him. I showed him my heart and praying for him. And I believe it was just prayer that made a difference. So I just kept going after him and after him. And I kept begging the Lord to make a difference. Intercession. And, and just just not giving up. And then then lastly, notice it says, and 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 then giving of thanks be made for all men. Giving of thanks. And sometimes we just have to thank the Lord for the opportunities that we've had. And thank the Lord for what 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 so we don't know what God might be doing in our heart. And by the way, we don't know what God has done in our heart. And sometimes you say, Well, I, I've asked them and they've turned me down. And and I don't know if they ever did get saved. Well, we, we don't know what's going on in our heart. And uh, sometimes we just have to, something, I think that this giving of thanks, it's, it's kind of like saying, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. It's Lord, uh, if, if it be according to your will, Lord, uh, just, I want to thank you for, for, for the very fact that you've given me the opportunities that you've given me. And you know, a, a thankful heart is a, is a heart that God can use. And um, we need to be thankful. And notice that, that thanks be given for all men. And sometimes we ought to be thankful for even the tough folks that God's put in our life. There, there's somebody out there that you've probably gotten contrary with over the years. And somebody that, that, that you need to be praying for that, 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 that just some old goat, <laughs> some old roughneck, somebody that's, that, 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 that's, that's irritated you, somebody that's done you wrong. Maybe an old landlord, ex-wife. <laughs> the Bible says that thanks be given for all men. And uh, that's not an ex-wife, is it? Uh, maybe an ex-husband. <laughs> uh, uh, I think it means, I think that's a generic term for men and women. But um, I'll be thankful. And then notice, and then, then real quickly, the people of prayer. And uh, real quickly, as we come to a close, it says, for kings... And for all the, those that are in authority, boy, if there's ever a time we need to be praying for our leaders, boy, we ought to pray for our leaders today. We ought to, we ought to pray for Governor Brown. And boy, we ought to be praying for him. It's easy to criticize him. We ought to pray for our president. Yeah. I'll be praying for the Congress. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those kings and those that are in authority. Uh, we ought to pray that we could lead a quiet and peaceful life 
in all godliness and honesty. Yeah. You're going to win people to the Lord. You need to, you need to leave, live a wholesome life. You need to have a testimony that people uh, can see Christ in the way you live. Uh, you want to win them to the Lord. And um, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God and our Savior. Who what? He wants all men to be saved. Verse 4. Aren't you glad of that? That he's not selective. Uh, and uh, he wants all people to come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm, I'm glad that when we pray for the lost, we're praying the will of God. It's the will of God that folks get saved. Read a little article and I'm done. And uh, years ago about George Mueller. And uh, George Mueller really wasn't a preacher. He was just a, just a, a layman that had a burden for young people. And he was a man of prayer. And um, built an orphanage. And, and um, amazing stories. If you want to read a great biography, read the biography of George Mueller. Some great, great, just great stories of answered prayer. And times that, boy, need milk for the orphanage. And he'd just start praying. And, and there'd be a milk wagon that would... Uh, break down out in front of the orphanage and <laughs> there'd be milk waiting for the kids and things and different things that George Mueller would pray for and he'd pray and God would answer and he'd pray and God would answer. Just, just great, great stories of his life. But in, in 1844, he wrote in his diary, he says, I began to pray for the conversion of five individuals. He says, I prayed every day without a single intermission, whether I was sick in health on land or in sea and Whatever the pressure of my engagements might be, 18 months elapsed before I saw the first of the five converted. He says, I thank God, and I prayed for the others. He says, a full five years elapsed, and then the second was converted. He says, I thank God for the second, and I prayed for the other three. Day by day, I continued to pray for them, every day, without fail, no matter how I felt, no matter how sick I was, no matter how busy I was. He says, then six years passed, and the third was converted. And I thank God for the three, and I went on to pray for the other two. These two remained unconverted. Thirty-six years later, he wrote that the other two were still unconverted. And uh, George Mueller uh, 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 wrote in his diary after 36 years, but I hope in God, and I pray on, and I look for the answer. They are not converted yet, but I believe they will be because God always answers prayer. In 1897, 52 years after he began to pray, these two men were finally converted. 52 years. George Mueller had died, and he was already in heaven. When they finally were converted, Mueller understood what Jesus meant when he told his disciples, men ought to always to pray and not to faint. Boy, what we can learn today if we just be reminded the importance of not only just praying, but keep praying. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. It never it is wrong to pray for the lost, and it's never wrong to keep praying for the lost. God bless you tonight. Let's bow our heads, and, and uh, as Brother Joe comes, we're going to sing a verse of invitation, and uh, let's do a little bit of praying tonight and asking God to make a difference in someone's life. Father, I pray that you'll bless the invitation. Lord, I, I, I'm i thinking of some folks right now that, that need to be saved, and, and Lord, I'm praying that you'll work on hearts, and, and Lord, I'm praying that, that, that you'll make a difference, and and that they'll come to your saving knowledge. I pray that you'll, you'll help each of us to be just better prayer warriors. And, and Lord, more faithful and not to yield and not to give up and, 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 and praying for the lost. And Lord, I'm praying for laborers for the harvest. I pray that, the, that, that, Lord, even this coming semester at West Coast Baptist College, there'd be a great increase in students. Lord, I pray that, that as Betty Jo and I travel and these next couple of weeks, that we could rally some students to... Uh, to, to enroll in the college and, and help see the need of the world and, and Lord, uh, give their life to the ministry. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, somebody would, would, would take the torch and, and carry it on and, and, um, uh, and, and uh, Lord, carry that burden and that we've tried to carry these last 45, 50 years and we'll give you the praise for what you're going to do now. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Let's all stand. As Brother Joe leads us, if God spoke to your heart, you know what you need to do. God bless you. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching. Praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Scott didn't do anything wrong tonight. I forgot to turn the mic on. And so uh, the mic wasn't turned on, Brother Scott. That was the problem. It was my fault. And uh, out of the habit of what I'm supposed to be doing up here. And uh, I need a little bit more practice. And uh, uh, we'll talk to Brother Wilson about that and uh, see if I can uh, get a little bit more practice in. And uh, thank you all for being here and uh, being faithful. Pray for Brother Wilson. And I think do back in the, uh, the end of the week and uh, may come back earlier because of uh, Mrs. Holden. and uh, But um, I think do back Friday or Saturday, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, anybody know who's supposed to be preaching Wednesday night? Brother Cribs. Brother Cribs. Okay, yeah, that'll be good. And uh, so be out Wednesday night. And um, Brother Cribs, uh, dismiss us in a word of prayer since your hand was up. Thank you.